Hi, welcome to Neighborhood Game Club. I'm Frank Howley. Today I'll be interviewing my writer, comedian friend, Heather Ann Campbell, whose impressive list of credits include The Eric Andre Show, Fox ADHD, Saturday Night Live, The Midnight Show, Whose Line Is It Anyways? But her most impressive credit to date, Neighborhood Game Club. This is my game collection. It's in a closet in the hallway because I don't want people to know that I'm a, it's like a huge fucking loser. Let's dig in. And like, see what we I have. mean, it, every time you show me this, I'm always marvel just because like everything you have is complete in box. You have like Virtual Boy stuff. This is apparently that it's got a previously viewed. Uh, <laughs> 999 so 30 that's day a guarantee. 999 price tag. I believe it's like $300 now for this stupid Waterworld game. So this is from the oh, wow. US launch of Nintendo 64 in fall 1996. It's an official Nintendo watch. That's this is the Pocket Station. So it was a memory card. So the reason I got it was there was a, um, a power up or something in Final Fantasy VIII that you could only get if you had this thing. And it was the code was dormant in the uh, American version. Uh, but this only came out in Japan. I was like, well, if I need, I need that sword. It's the demo disc that came with the Saturn. You have Perfect Dark complete in box. Yeah, in the corner got Perfect there. Dark here in the box. You have, Final Fan you have a lot of Final Fantasy figures throughout your place. There's a little Vivi in the corner. Yeah, there's also those guys back there is the um, Final Fantasy VIII action figures. that came I was a huge. <laughs> nerd for Final Fantasy. You have all these Game Boy Advance games, but behind that you have all your Super Nintendo games. Yeah. Still complete in box. Let me see. All those those boxes for things. I print I made this box. <laughs> this doesn't exist, but I really wanted the, the right like OG the, artwork. The correct box. Um and then I also print and and press my own <laughs> Oh my holder. god, oh my god, <laughs> people are just gonna make fun of me. No, this is, we have, let's see, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy, Secret of Mana, Super Mario, basically all JRPGs. Mm -hmm. Chrono Trigger complete in box. This is, this is, uh, I recently discovered there's a place that will uh, sell um, translated games that were never released here. But I have Secret of Mana 2 and I also have Mother 3. And this I'm currently playing on my Game Boy Advance, but it's just, it comes with instructions and it's the bot, everything that should have been released here and never was. Ghost in the Shell Holy shit. for PS1. Um, and then down here is... This is a giant Street Fighter box set. Oh my god, this game is so good, guys. <laughs> have you played Street Fighter? <laughs> um, you have all your Saturn games. All your Saturn games. Oh, look at this, this is great. Um, Resident <laughs> Evil in the long box, that's pretty nice. God, that's the worst art. <laughs> I think my favorite era might have been PS2 because it was uh, it was pretty close to, it was almost like VHS or DVD because everything that anybody wanted to play was on PS2. All of these weird Japanese games were coming over. It, it felt like it was almost, there was one platform. I know Xbox was out, but nobody, nobody had an Xbox. I mean, everyone, ha I had an Xbox, but no, not you didn't play PS2 it. PS2 was universal. Yeah, it was a universal system. Yeah. Um, then you also have uh, the uh, Nino Cooney box set somewhere, right? Uh, I don't have the box set, but I have the this. wizard book. I yeah, have the wizard book. Oh my god, guys, I really like this. No, game. Not enough people play it, but Nino Cooney, I think, was my one of my favorite games of the last generation. It's really great, and it's got music by the guy who does all the Ghibli yeah. music. Hit, hit, hit Joe. Joe Hisashi. I there think. it is. <laughs> of everything in this closet, what would you say is your favorite game? I could say something specific and and like give myself street cred by doing it, but it's The Last of Us. I went to uh, there's a one night event in Santa Monica where they did the dialogue and played the music live with the composer, like actually like playing the music, um, and at the end of the event which I think was just called The Last of Us Live. They gave us the German steel box for oh, the awesome. uh, remastered. So yeah, probably The Last of Us. It's the most affecting game I think I've ever played, even though it's not as good as Street Fighter. So this is all of the um, Play magazines that back when I was a video game journalist that I wrote for. Uh, so how many years did you write for Play? Uh, let's see. 
Um, I wrote, wrote from, I think, 2006 till 2010. I just kind of moved in here, so I haven't set up everything, but like my Saturn, my N64, everything is in here. I have this, this is funny. It's a, an Atari Jesus. Lynx bag. <laughs> um, Jeez. This, I had modded, so you can play Japanese or American oh, games. God. Saturn has some of the best Japanese imports. This is a Sony PVM, which is a production monitor. Uh, so the pixel clarity is really, it's really nice. Like each individual, it's just, it's, it look, the games look gorgeous on it. If you grew up in the nineties, you might remember that there were like screens at Kmart where you, the controller was like hooked up into the screen and it looked totally different than when you got home. Often it was just like a high value, high end production monitor in that setup. So you're like, oh my God, the graphics are so good. And then you get home and it on like a shitty this, that's awesome this have you ever uh have you ever played minecraft on it no i don't play i don't play minecraft i build legos but i don't play mine build legos all right heather's a little out of touch with the gaming world so we'll, we'll put her in hey, touch we'll let her know it. about minecraft <laughs> <laughs> welcome to neighborhood game club the podcast portion i'm here with my good friend heather ann campbell hello as you saw, she has a very hardcore game collection uh everything is complete in box kept in pristine condition you obviously care um, yeah. <laughs> you have a huge history of games. You've worked as a journalist. You've written comedy sketches through Foxy to HD, Midnight Show, all these huge things. But I want to know how you kind of got started with video games, like your earliest memories, hmm. what systems you started on and all that. Uh, well, um, my parents were very much, uh, they were of the opinion that if I got good grades, then I could get rewarded with mm -hmm. a thing. Um, and there was a 7-Eleven near my house that had like a Street Fighter 2 machine. And so I would go... We, if I clean the house, I'd get a dollar. And if I took that dollar and brought it to 7-Eleven, I got four chances to play Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, from very early on, I was, um, it was like, oh, if you get straight A's, then we'll get you a Super Nintendo. And if I get straight A's and get a Super Nintendo, or if you get straight A's, you'll get a Sega Genesis. And so that's kind of, it was just, uh, it's like the way you train a dog. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, here's a treat. Eat, eat this treat and do a trick. Uh, and my trick was grades. Um, so yeah, so really, I mean, like my whole life I've been into video gaming. Uh, I at one point had a master system. Yeah. So did you get, cause that's the thing I, I talked on the first episode was, cause originally the first consoles, I mean, post Atari and all that was like Nintendo and then Sega's first console. Mm -hmm. Uh, I feel like I don't know anyone else who ever had the master system. <laughs> well, my dad looked at, uh, it's funny cause I was listening to the Matthew Bruce thing. My dad looked at the, um. At the graphics on the Nintendo and the Master <laughs> System, and he's like, "Well, this one displays more colors." Oh yeah. So this is the one I'll get for you. And I was like, "I don't know anybody who <laughs> had this. Any? I've, no, I've never even heard of it." Yeah. And then, like, the games were either on cartridge or on card. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think my first game was Ghost House, yeah, which was on a card. And it was just like, I don't. You there? You couldn't go to school and be like, "Hey guys, I, I got a, I got a Ghost House." Nobody. <laughs> cared at all. I, I don't know anything about Master Systems, so that's fascinating. I also had uh, this, I think it gave me nightmares, there was uh, 3D glasses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the only game I had for the 3D glasses was like a, a game where the Russians had declared a nuclear <laughs> war, and the missiles would fly out of the TV and you'd have to shoot them with the light gun. But it it's impossible because like the de like where you're aiming <laughs> the gun was was so far outside of the screen especially mm -hmm. my screen was like this big uh so i i destroyed america like every night before i went to bed <laughs> just by not even like by being a poor strategist yeah. it was always my fault like i had not <laughs> shot down enough missiles <laughs> So, do you know, remember the name of the title of that game, or is it Excuse? I want to say it's Missile Defense 3. Okay, I'll, I'll look it up. So, before getting hardcore into Street Fighter 2, what were some early games you played outside of Missile Defender? <laughs> <laughs> Missile Defense 3D. I'm almost positive uh -huh. that was what um, uh, Let's see. I remember renting Super Mario 2 mm -hmm. uh, from Blockbuster. Yeah. Uh, the music selections, or the music during the selection screen is still one of my... Favorite. You could like move the cursor along yeah, yeah, with yeah. it. For, I, oh my god, I can't believe you're gonna put this online. <laughs> no, I, that's what all those, all, all, every episode will be like this. Um, uh, and Mega Man 2. Yeah. I love Mega Man 2. <laughs> so, like for me, yeah, my earliest favorite games, I mean, there's Super Mario World mm -hmm. and then Street Fighter 2. Yeah. So, 
you because you you experienced Street Fighter 2 in the arcades. You said like 7-Eleven. For me, I, I just remember like before I could even consciously remember, I just had Street Fighter 2 like in my house, mm -hmm. waking up early and playing it. When you were playing it in the arcade scene, like the late 90s, 90s, were was it competitive or was it mostly one on one well, at that point? It's Street Fighter 2 at 7 Eleven was me <laughs> standing on an egg crate. Because when I would come in, the guy would like hand me this egg crate <laughs> so I could see the game. And it was like me and a bunch of like gang kids <laughs> who were like all adult. Yeah. I mean, adult. That Teenage. They're, they're probably like 15 or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, these adults. <laughs> Uh, but it was like me versus like the dudes in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was always had like a line. Um, so that was really, and it was like, oh, the little girl wants to play. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but in the late 90s, when like Street Fighter 3 came out, um, there were a couple of really, really good arcades in Chicago at the time. There was uh, Super Just Games, Dennis Place for Games. Um, I can't remember the other one. Um, but I would like, you would do like an hour long drive to go out to uh, Super Just Games, mm -hmm. which was a nickel arcade. Oh, wow. So you'd pay a fee to get in and then everything was a nickel mm -hmm. or like 15 nickels yeah. or something stupid. Um, and that was where Super Turbo was premiered, oh, was wow. that arcade, because they were like game testing. Yeah. Uh, and there's actually video somewhere on the internet of me at a Street Fighter tournament in like the late 90s. And Seth Killian is there, <laughs> uh, who ended up like being one of the designers on Street mm -hmm. Fighter Four. And they're like panning the panning the room, and it's like all these guys who are still involved in the scene. Um, let's see if I can remember. I think Daigo might have even been there, uh, but it was like a you know, it was like a, a, a multiple elimination. I got eliminated. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was it was great. I mean. They also used to test Mortal Kombat. Because yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is Midway is based in Chicago, right? And so they had a huge like. There's still an arcade scene in Chicago. There's a, it's out outside of Chicago. But it's called Galloping Ghost Arcade, which is like the arcade in America where it's like I don't know maybe hundreds of machines and it's like super AC. And that's where they recently revealed like Primal Rage Two. Oh like, wow! It, it's it, it's like this underground community. But yeah, so Midway was there, and I was curious like. Did, You're not going to believe this, yeah. but when I was in elementary school, Midway came to our school <laughs> because it was like, like all this, I think the theme of the week was alternative jobs or something. Yeah. Cause it was like, Hey kids, you don't have to have a single dream. Mm -hmm. And the Midway guys came in before Mortal Kombat and showed us the drawing of Goro. <laughs> uh, and they were like, we design video games. You can design video games. Were there parent complaints that children had nightmares? No, because there was no, I mean, there was no context for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, we were just a big spooky monster. Children yeah. were like, oh wow, that guy's got four arms. <laughs> Uh, but they came into our school and I, it was crazy. And now I look back on that, I'm like, did that happen or yeah. did I dream that? Because like, my, I had a friend who, who who studied like graphic design or something in Chicago, and those Midway guys now teach at all these technical schools. Yeah. Like I think his name is Dan Tobias. He was the toasty guy in Mortal Kombat. Taught my friend like visual design. That's, That's cool. awesome. So they're still in Chicago. So the biggest like thing back then was 2D games. I mean, there's pixel art, but then Mortal Kombat's kind of like photorealistic. It's mm -hmm. cheesy today, but like. Were did did any of that gore? Do you remember that like appeal of like Street Fighter versus Mortal Kombat? I mean, I there was there was like, yeah, there was like a friction between the yeah. two things. But anybody who liked video games played Street Fighter mm -hmm. because the combo system was deeper. The it was faster. It was more than just an attraction. Like it was an actual like. I feel like it wasn't until Mortal Kombat two that people started playing Mortal Kombat competitively. Yeah, and there would be like a Street Fighter tournament and then also a Mortal Kombat two mm -hmm. tournament. Um, because before that it was just, I mean like, it was like, this was no, the only like, move that you could Yeah, do. there's uppercuts, sweeps, and leg kicks, <laughs> and part, like there's no, it's no combos or anything. And but then, and there's like one combo you could do with Scorpion where you like kicked and then disappeared. And yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And that's as deep as it got. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause I, like for me as a kid, this is so stupid, but like, I, I love Street Fighter 2 cause it was, all the Capcom games were charming, you yeah. know, like whatever, beating up, but they weren't violent. There was a charm to them. And yeah. like this, you know, all the characters, the locales, whereas Mortal Kombat was just like, cheesy but it was bloody and yeah, gory yeah but as a kid me and my friends in elementary school were like oh well like we were appealed <laughs> by like the blood of it but ultimately yeah like we would never i wouldn't spend much time playing mortal kombat i would always go back to street fighter mm -hmm. so street fighter 2 is probably my favorite game of all time wow just and like specifically the street fighter 2 the new challengers or super street fighter yeah, 2, yeah. whatever where it's like all you know four cammy does like this in the opening yeah exactly <laughs> yeah that's that's my favorite 
Um, what this is such a like nuanced question, but like, which is your favorite version of Street Fighter Two? Of Street Fighter Two? Yeah, because ultimately they released Turbo, which had Akuma and Super moves, but like, well, that was Super Turbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I mean, the I remember the first time that I played Vanilla Street Fighter mm-hmm. Two, and it was the all the characters were larger than anything I'd ever seen. <laughs> And it was so colorful, and I could, I when you when I was hitting buttons and Chun Li, because of course I picked Chun Li. Yeah. Because I was like, oh my god, I can fight this girl. <laughs> uh, so she's doing her lightning kick, and I was like, I had figured out something. Yeah. So I think that v- Vanilla Street Fighter Two is probably fun, like a formative experience. Mm-hmm. But if I had to play one today, it would be Super Turbo. With yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also remember trying we all like me and the guys in the neighborhood trying to figure out how to make Blanca throw up <laughs> because that? if you hit him the right way oh, you'd yeah. be like <laughs> 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 and his eyes would fuck out well I mean like the thing that was like so rid- like, one thing whatever Mortal, Mortal Kombat and Gore Street Fighter didn't but like the game over screens where it's everyone's just beat up yeah. and bloody and like it wasn't done in pixel art it was like hand drawn yeah. it was so disturbing yeah. and, like especially if Blanca's eyes were completely bludgeoned <laughs> out and like everyone's just destroyed and like I remember even as a kid that was so traumatic because yeah. like when Guile dies in Street Fighter it's just ooh ah uh, like it's and it's like you win but then when it's the da 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 game over yeah. it's he is destroyed. he's got like a huge like a growth on his head <laughs> <laughs> like they're, they're so brutal yeah I don't, so maybe that was like Capcom's like a, trying to compete That's with Mortal really Kombat funny. so then Street Fighter 3 came out in the late mm-hmm. 90s and that was slow yeah it, it was, was so slow whereas hyper first. fighting with Street Fighter 2 they kept making it faster and faster and then Street Fighter 3 is where I feel like they they really wanted to make it art yeah like it was so slow and graceful and yeah. like the competitive aspect for it was like every button press could be so like you also precise. you also went from like I don't know twenty characters in Super Street Fighter. Hopefully it was like sixteen. Yeah, once they added like candy and then you went on. all the way back down. To, it was like six or eight. Yeah, in the initial the original Street Fighter three, and like two of them were Ken and Ryu. Yeah, and that was all new characters. But but that was the first time that I felt like there there was a real differentiation between Ken and Ryu. Like yes, before that styles. it was like how it swapped. <laughs> before I mean they, they added fire to his Ken uppercuts Ryu, and yeah. stuff in two, but like it really was of different style of play for the mm-hmm. two of them. Ken was so weak. <laughs> uh, I, I, God, I played the hell out of that game. Um, there was a, an arcade near, I, that was when I was performing, uh, that was when I was first performing comedy. And maybe like six blocks away from Improv Olympic in Chicago was an arcade. Mm-hmm. So I'd show up early, uh, walk all the way down, play video games for a couple of hours, and then walk all the way back and do the show, and then walk back and play video games. The thing I remember with Street Fighter 3, like, I have, I have two distinct memories. One, the first time I ever played it, I was on a, a Disney cruise. <laughs> like, I went on a Disney cruise, whatever, and they had an arcade, and it was all free play. And I think the entire cruise, I just, the only thing I can remember is just playing Street Fighter 3. Like, funny. for however long we go, I would just play Street Fighter 3 the whole time. And then later on, whenever, the only other time I'd see it, because I didn't have a Dreamcast till late, so there, the only time I'd get a chance to play Street Fighter 3 was when I went to Vegas Gameworks. Oh, GameWorks! Well, oh, we can tell. That's my favorite. Like, they I had a three. They had the um the rotating uh flying game. Yeah. It was like a pilot fighter game. I don't know. It's like you sat in a cockpit, and the whole cockpit. Would yeah, do this. they because it was Vegas, which you know, just like their casinos and hotels, like it was. That's more. And they just dump money, and so every arcade had so many like huge games. Yeah. And GameWorks specifically, the dumbest gimmick, which is now almost a reality, is they had a Tekken three setup that was a giant green blue screen. And you could pay like five bucks to play. <laughs> and it's where you stand, and if you punch, your character does a punch. If you, do you remember that? Did you ever try this out? No. I'm sure there's videos of it online, but it, whatever. And it's, it was like virtual reality Tekken. But the whole appeal of Tekken is like combos. Like yeah. you press punch eight times and you do a combo. With that, it was just people playing, doing one punch, there's a lag, <laughs> then like Bruce <laughs> does a punch. And it was just like you'd see families like trying to like wiggle <laughs> and it was awful. But it was as a kid, it was like who played Tekken on his PS1, like, oh my god. Yeah. But now we're like, you know, 15 yeah. years later getting to it. But yeah, with, with GameWorks, I would go and I'd play Street Fighter 3. And Street Fighter 3 felt cool. Like, because it was because I was so used to Street Fighter 2, which was a little cartoony and like yeah. especially like at age like six years. But Street Fighter 3 came out and had a very like hip hop aesthetic. Yeah, the soundtrack like, was really cool. Like, and then Yun and Yin had like the the hats and they had skateboarders. Like it was yeah. it was very hip without being like just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I don't know, it, was, it was so self assured and confident. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, and again, t- talking about that art style. So yeah, so Street Fighter 3 really appealed to me. 
Uh, and then again with Street Fighter Four, they like <laughs> they kind of again they, each iteration they went in a different direction. Well, actually, no. Even before Street Fighter Four, Street Fighter Two I loved, but then it went from Marvel vs. Capcom to me. Yeah, like those games I loved. Oof. <laughs> Marvel vs. Capcom 1 I think holds up as like it's fun it's not completely broken whereas Marvel vs. Capcom 2 has a million characters yeah I liked 2 I didn't but I had 2 on the Dreamcast yeah um I actually pirated 2 on yeah. the Dreamcast because you could just burn it to a onto CD. a CDR yeah um but yeah, I didn't really like I, I felt it, it felt chaotic mm-hmm. I know that everything is specific <laughs> in Marvel Capcom 2, like, yeah. it's not like you're just mashing buttons. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But combos. compared to, like, the pace and the specificity of Street Fighter 3, I was like, <laughs> I don't, there's, like, fucking robots flying in all the time. <laughs> but, like, for me, because I think when I first played Maze, maybe 11 or but that, that was, it was so fast-paced, it was ridiculous, and, like, I got really good at it to the point where, like, yeah, I could walk up to an arcade, beat somebody, mm. and, like, I would specifically use, like, Servbot, BB Hood, yeah. you know, like, just these, yeah. these joke characters and okay. just destroy, yeah, because yeah. Servbot was, like, that's the other thing is you'd have you kick over him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'd have I forget the giant like mech character versus Servbot. Um, wasn't it? It's the bad guy from X Men. Mango Sentinel. That's M- Sentinel. Yeah, I can't remember. Sentinel, yeah. yeah, Sentinel. But yeah, like just the sprite works. Although I think it's funny with the, with Morgan from Darkstalkers, they use like a t- ten year outdated sprite. Yeah. Every other character was clean, and then Morgan was like grainy. Yeah. But yeah, more more Capcom Two I loved, and then eventually got it on Xbox or PS Two. And I was so obsessed with the game where I think you had 60 characters and I would do over the course of maybe a month is I'd beat the game with every single combo of characters. So I'd just go in a row like, all right, why are you Ken Gambit? And then Ken Gambit, Chun Lee, Ken yeah. And that's what I spent, that's how I spent like seventh grade at home. I like I was obsessed with fighting games as a kid. And again, I, I mentioned this before, like with Tekken. I would just go into the practice lobby, memorize 10 hit combos. I never got into Tekken. I played Soul Calibur and Virtua Fighter, mm-hmm. and I played Tekken like three times. I'm like, this is garbage. <laughs> I I think for me, because it was my first PlayStation game, mm-hmm. and so that was the generation going from like, you know, pixel art to 3D. So I yeah. think that just being captivated by the graphics. I played Toshinden more oh, than yeah. I played Tekken. <laughs> I, I think or it was Bushido Blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I know I loved Tekken and but yeah, with all these fighting games specifically, it's all these hardcore camps. You're either like way into Street Fighter, yeah. or way into Tekken. Yeah. I mean, there's deep players who'll play everything, but like yeah, you specifically Street Fighter, mm-hmm. uh, and ultimately like that's where my camp is. But yeah, I like Tekken. I love Dead or Alive just for its just for the boobs. Yeah, you can say for the boobs, Frank. Uh, <laughs> for downloadable bikinis. Yeah, they have. There's so many costumes and funny girls. <laughs> See, like the other games don't have that as much. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, you need some moments alone. <laughs> uh, so with Street Fighter 4 again that came out New Direction the art song I remember seeing it for the first time looked totally weird because it was like watercolor brush strokes yeah, yeah. and it wasn't until seeing it in person did it like you fi- finally get it and that was a game same thing with like Marvel's Capcom and like Tekken I spent so much time playing uh, and I have like very distinct memories is like I feel like how we became friends really was like we met, I met you after a comedy show and then like it leaked to all you like videos whatever and then we immediately became like Street Fighter friends on yeah. Xbox Live yeah I remember like I was still in college and I would have like take a summer class come home and then I would like I would play Street Fighter for an hour and then we would get off and do our thing but like yeah. that whole summer was just us playing Street Fighter online yeah. and we got very competitive and like evenly <laughs> par like I bought out a fight stick and yeah. like we would just like completely like I, that's the other thing growing up as a kid I never had friends who were good at fighting games mm-hmm. so like if I had a friend come over I'd have to like play shitty yeah. it was either that or go to the arcade or beat someone to completely outmatch me i never had a friend who could like play on the same level mm-hmm. so with you at street fighter it was this very high level can play where it was like oh my god this is so fun you were really good with guile yes my like specific characters were like <laughs> guile i'm very good with zangief i'm not great with chun li but I, or not uh cammy but i yeah. like playing as cammy um, have you played the beta for five? No, so I want to talk about that. How is Street Fighter Five yet? Because I haven't played it yet. Uh, so far, it's feel so. The difference between two and three, and the difference between three and four, were so great. Mm-hmm. It was like you you're crossing a, a gulf to <laughs> a totally different game. Uh, five so far feels very similar to four. Mm-hmm. Uh, the speed is very similar. The I'm, it's a different kind of graphics, but they're kind of similar in the same world. Uh, so far, it feels. It feels close. I like that parries are back. Um, I don't know. It's just I'm I'm waiting to see how the rest of the game develops. Yeah, because it's they're still leaking. I didn't get the beta because the main reason is I don't have a PS4 fight stick yet. 
Yeah, no, I, I've been playing it on that. And like, awful. playing Street Fighter 4 competitively pushed me towards like, I can't play fighting games without a stick anymore. Like, I, I want to really experience it. Yeah. So I'm waiting for, I'm hoping when Street Fighter 5 comes out, there'll be like a bundle or something. I'll finally get the stick. They just announced a new character on yeah. yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Recede? Recede? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, um, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think, like, they're, they're cool. They're bringing in the alpha character, Ar- Armika, or Armika. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Like, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how many new, if it's going to be like Street Fighter 3, where it's like a whole new cast of characters. Because, like, I almost wonder if they're just going to have Charlie and not Guile. Like, you know. You know, I had a dream the other night that the the roster was Ken, Ryu, and then all either Alpha 3 yeah. or, like, absolutely nobody from 4. Um, and I know that that doesn't mean anything, but I dreamt it. <laughs> so I, I, that's my dream. <laughs> uh, Alex. <laughs> but, but, uh, they, it could, I mean, cause of their plan with DLC is like, they hope to release one version and then over a year or however, just leak out more characters. Mm. So like, it, I, maybe it will be in order to in- incentivize like people buying DLC, they'll probably just have like new characters. And then, oh, you want Guy? I'll pay five bucks for it or unlock it. There was a build of four where Morgan was playable at some point. I like either yeah. saw it uh, on at uh, an event or something. Um, like it might have been like a private interview. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. Some somebody yeah. somewhere. Uh, was like, yeah, we have Morgan, but we can't get her to work, and so we're not going to bring her in. Because they they remastered Darkstalkers for like PS3 360. It was when during, when Cap, I missed this. Capcom had like a year or two where it's like they brought back every arcade game, like yeah. Mars, Capcom, Street Fighter Three. They brought back they brought back Darkstalkers on the mm-hmm. uh, like Xbox Live Arcade. Nobody bought it, so yeah. that like because they were hoping to like like Street Fighter bring back Darkstalkers, but there was no interest, so they yeah. killed it. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see what comes up through Street Fighter. Um, were you a huge fan of like Alpha or anything like that? I I liked Alpha One and Alpha Two. I really didn't like Alpha. I, 3. I'm the same. I'm the same way. I, Alpha Two I thought was so cool. Yeah. And it's something with Alpha Three. There was I, like a delay or something, and there's input lag. There's something was yeah. weird. I yeah, again I don't know. I yeah yeah something felt off, and like most people are like, oh Alpha Three is defended, but like for me Alpha Two just yeah it felt fast and fun. Whereas Alpha, Alpha 3, I don't know if it was like either too technical or too many characters. I don't know what it was, but Alpha 2 was I, like... I like swear it was actually the... Imp- like it felt different. Mm-hmm. The input felt different than Alpha 2. Like I swear you press over and then they, it would... There was like a <laughs> four frame delay or something. There's something weird in the actual... Was like, it, you, did you play in the arcade or did you play on like Dreamcast or PlayStation? Both. Oh, and it's yeah, still- and I was just like, ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Didn't Alpha 3 come out for Super Nintendo, or was that Alpha 2? Alpha 2 was on Super Nintendo. Yeah. And the, the, that Super Nintendo port of Alpha 2 is supposed to be kind of like... It had like a loading screen. Yeah, for a Super yeah. Nintendo, kind of whack. But I played Alpha, Alpha 2 in arcades a lot. Yeah. Um, so, get, so, whatever, all these Street Fighter games came out, but you were also a video game journalist. And when I say journalist, I don't mean like code talk or anything, like actual like print yes. journal. Like this is back with video game magazines. Um, like as a kid, I grew up... This was oh, my first gig as a games journalist. Was for the Gamers Quarter. Is that an independent? It was an independent. Uh, 2006. Huh? Um, this is 2006. It was long form, like very no. See, there's yeah. nothing. No but pictures. Words. No ads. No where's words. All, where's the ads? It's just words. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, a lot of these guys still still work in the industry. Um, yeah, and then I went on to. Uh, I wrote. I was like the Hollywood correspondent for. Edge, which was then nextgen.biz for mm-hmm. online, and then the editor of Play Magazine, and then the executive editor of Play Magazine. Yep. <laughs> so, growing up before you finally became a journalist, like what led you to becoming a game journalist? Did you read a lot of print magazines? Did you do a lot of writing in your spare time before? Um, I subscribed as a child to uh, Nintendo Power and Sega Visions. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Is that Sega's like attempt at Nintendo yeah. Power? Um, so, uh, the Sega Visions cover was the Master System grid <laughs> that, like, blue and white with, yeah. like, whatever their ma- their yeah. game was. God, that's a long time ago. And then, like, official PlayStation magazine, mm-hmm. uh, which came with a demo disc. Yes. Every month. That was awesome. Yeah. That was, that was awesome. I, for all, all through PlayStation, I had demo disc, which I would, like, I never owned Hot Shots Golf, but I played it through the demo disc, like, yeah. countless times. Yeah. Like and then when Xbox 360 launched, they had downloadable demos, but yeah. like you'd have to wait like a mu- like days to wait. So like that didn't catch up. But yeah, PlayStation demo discs were huge to me. 
As a kid, I grew up reading EGM. Oh yeah, that was like the first and yeah, biggest huge one. Huge fan of with quarter quarterman. Yeah. Is that his name? I, I don't remember. I maybe they had like he sushi. He's like X. a rumor guy. Yeah, sushi yeah. X is also that. Yeah. Um, and then I was again, I was a kid and I sucked at video games, so I was obsessed with like cheat codes. So mm -hmm. Expert Gamer, which yeah. was like their like cheat code oh, magazine. Oh, like, you mean like this? Is that? Here we go. How to win <laughs> at Nintendo <laughs> games too? <laughs> Does this have the codes for Splatoon in it? Uh, Mylon <laughs> Secret Castle. I don't. <laughs> oh wow. Is that terrible? Isn't it? Paperboy. Yeah. Okay. How to beat Paperboy. Pedal your bike through suburbia. You won't get points, just a moment's peace of mind. <laughs> Beginner's strategy. As in real life, there is no pattern to the order in which obstacles appear. <laughs> this is like, that was, that's like philosophy. <laughs> All new games. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's still relevant. Yeah. yeah. So EGM, Expert Gamer. There was a magazine for a brief period of time specifically written for preteens called Game Now. Oh no. Which like, but it was bad. Like, no. it was for, I think specifically written for 12 year olds. And no. like, I don't know, so I, I, Game Now I read a lot. Oh boy. But yeah, so I think, so Play Magazine, I, I never, yeah, I never checked that out, but did you enjoy your experience as a games journalist? Was it fun? Cause like, as a kid, I felt like my dream jobs was either like, yeah, video game journalists or to work for the WWF. Those were like, like <laughs> <laughs> those were my two dreams. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, I, so, um, I really, uh, I really liked, there's a forum that I was, uh, was active on. There's insert credit forums and then select button mm -hmm. forums, uh, which were like kind of constantly getting into the, the, the grain of video game, like the philosophy of game design, yeah. like why the first level of Super Mario Brothers is a tutorial mm -hmm. because like you like it's just really like a deconstructed games at a time when nobody was deconstructing yeah. games and what was nice about play is they didn't tell me what to write oh that's awesome they would assign games to me but they wouldn't be like hey can you make this a fluff piece yeah there were a couple times where they would make me change the the content of a review for um and i'm sure that the, I don't even pay attention to what's happening in games journalism, but I yeah. hear about that there's something where people are angry about video game journalism because there's no ethics yeah, yeah, in yeah, game yeah. journalism. Yeah. Uh, and that's just like when you're running the business of a video game magazine and somebody is keeping you afloat, especially in like 2008 when everything was falling apart, yeah. uh, if they're going to give you $100,000 to run an ad, and then your games journalist is like, the game that we're advertising is garbage. Yeah. Uh, they would take the review from me and they'd give it to somebody else to for whom that genre was appealing. Yeah. So if it was a saccharine, awful JRPG, yeah. and we had a two-page ad for that JRPG, and I said, this game is garbage, <laughs> they would take the game away from me and they would give it to somebody who loved mm -hmm. that kind of game. Yeah. And that was as far as like the changing of review scores stuff would go. Mm -hmm. But like when they, when Final Fantasy XII came out, they gave it to me like a month early and oh I God. played it every day and I just got to talk about the game in, in, the, in the way that I wanted to talk mm -hmm. about it. And the same with Street Fighter. Uh, and then like... I went out to Montreal for um, when Ubisoft was making the first Naruto game that didn't suck. Yeah. Which had like uh, an open world of, um, what is the the town in which he lives? It's like the town of the leaf. What? It, Konoha. <laughs> Konoha. Uh, so um, like it was an incredible experience and I got to play that for a few days and they were like, it's a cover story, but we don't care what you write about. Mm -hmm. And that was great. Um, I feel like now there aren't a lot of outlets other than Edge that allow their journalists the freedom to sort of investigate a game on their own terms. Mm -hmm. uh, because games are personal experiences, yeah. especially now that uh, so many of them are sandboxes. Like you can talk about the mechanics of how Grand Theft Auto works, but it won't ever be your Grand Theft Auto is never going to be somebody mm -hmm. else's Grand Theft Auto. And the same with like Fallout or any of those games. It's your experience of some insane moment isn't going to be there for everybody yeah. else. And if you don't write about that insane moment, you're lying. And if you, or, or at least obfuscating your truth. So that was great about play. Um, but man, did I have to play some shitty fucking games. Yeah, like, so what were some of the worst games that you were forced to, like, grind your way through? Because, like, I'm sure that's also sucks. Is like, because I don't have to, like, video games never became my job. So it's like, I can play a game 
Like, like with Metal Gear 5, that's something, like, it's a good game, but it's a thing where it's like, I'm not forced to play an 80-hour game in three days. I can, yeah. like, spread it out over I months. I don't. I mean, like, the truth is, I don't remember the games that mm -hmm. were awful. I know <laughs> that you could, I could open, you know what? <laughs> is that an ad for Dungeon Fighter Online in the back? Oh yep. Oh my god. Sorry. I'm, this is a... <laughs> <laughs> Dunge okay, we talked. Rod and I talked about beat 'em ups an episode again, a, a episode ago. Dungeon Fighter Online is a Korean like beat 'em up game. That's like an online <laughs> game of the month. Street Fighter Four. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, that's so cool. Heather in her issue of Play Magazine, along with all the editors. That's so. Along rough. as as an editor. Yeah. Not along <laughs> with <laughs> as an editor. This is my job. Yeah, I know. I meant with all the editors. Uh, this was when we dropped review scores. Oh my god. Um, yeah. So that's another thing too that. I think like Jeff Gersman and uh, Jim Sterling are these proponents of like the idea of like so many people get so angry immediately over review score. When you're talking about every game as a personal experience, a seven like doesn't equate, oh, this game, you know, it was this deep experience. Oh, oh here we go. Here's something about me. This is actually a, this is from uh, Gamer's Quarter. Oh, wow. And they this cross is a reprint. Sticker, yeah. yeah. They reblogged it to your magazine. <laughs> <laughs> there was some trash game that I had to play. Where I, like, at like 14 hours in, I was in my apartment alone screaming. <laughs> like, like the, um, the, I don't remember, it was some JRPG for PSP. Mm -hmm. Hello, dog. <laughs> uh, and, um, they could, the, the dialogue was set at a specific pace. Yeah. So it would be like... Oh, you couldn't skip it. You couldn't advance it. And I was like, ah! <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> awful. So, so one thing I'm, I would ever be kind of terrified of like reviewing a game early enough is like, if there's a part I get stuck at, especially if you with some older JRPGs, if there's something very obtuse, I couldn't go online to look up how to beat it. Right. Would that ever happen to you where you'd have to like struggle trying to figure something out? I mean, so for Final Fantasy XII, there were like weapons that... If you oh yeah, the zodiac gun, chair yeah, or something. Yeah, that like you couldn't unlock those weapons, yeah. but that's not. Is that really? That doesn't ruin the game. Yeah, it doesn't ruin the yeah. game. So I didn't really. And often, a lot of times, the game would come out in Japan ahead of oh, time. Yeah. So if you get like really, really crippled by something, you would either call the developer and be like, "Hey, man, uh, so like, what am I supposed to do <laughs> after this part in Gears of War?" Um, not that that ever happened no, in Gears of War. There'd usually be like a blinking arrow and a guy would be like, let's go kill that guy. <laughs> and then if you didn't do anything, you'd be like, hey, <laughs> you, I think we should kill that yeah. guy. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah. See, like, I, I miss gaming magazines. I mean, now I'm happy everything's online. It's immediate. But like, yeah, as a kid, I, again, I had a huge collection of game magazines. And like, if I was bored one day, I would just go back and look at these games and like, there's something about having physical media that's so appealing to me. I like flipping through it. Yeah. Whereas now it's, I feel, yeah, again, like with a lot of those, there are articles with lots of words and yeah. there's nothing, there's no, literally there's no clickbait or anything. Yeah. So where do you go today to find good gaming journalism if there is any? Oh, I don't, well, I hate, <laughs> I hate video games yeah. now. Um, towards the end of my game journalism career, like I felt like there somewhere in... 2009 or 2010 when the industry realized that women would also play video games mm -hmm. they started telling us which video games to play and uh towards the end of my career i would go in to play like i'd be at the capcom booth ready to play street fighter and they would direct me towards like cooking mama or whatever the <laughs> f i don't even know who the yeah. fuck made that game uh or it would be like hey um are you here for the hannah montana game i'd be like Jesus. no no, I'm, ugh, I'm here to play Kingdom Hearts. Or, uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm here. I'm here to play the good to Disney play game. the good Disney game. <laughs> um, and I felt like there, it, it was like I used, to, I, I still play with Lego. Mm -hmm. um, and now there's Lego for girls. Oh yeah. And it's like what the fuck? It's a brick. It's not like a. It's not a. It's a brick. Like that's a human thing, not a girl or boy thing. Mm -hmm. And once they, they started uh, marketing games towards girls, they saw me as a girl video oh, game yeah, journalist yeah. as opposed to a video game journalist. And it was a very frustrating experience. Burnt me out on the industry totally. extremely quickly. And I just was like, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs>
uh, after play went under, I like I got offered a job at a couple different places, and I was like, I don't ever want to be at E3 again. Yeah, because I remember I think I went with you like the last year I went to E3. Again, we I went like I got to go to E3 one year. The only thing I did was play Street Fighter 3, the <laughs> HD remake. But like yeah, we walked around. Disney was promoting like a Jonas Brothers game and they had yeah. free coffee, yeah. which was I don't really know, but like. Yeah, the only thing that really appealed was like the older, I don't know, yeah. something about the older games. So I um, I don't read, I'll read NeoGAF mm-hmm. and I'll read Select Button. Um, and Kotaku's on my like feed lead. Yeah. Uh, but I don't really, I used to go every day and be like, oh, what's happening? Yeah. And, and I don't care anymore. <laughs> um, I don't care. I don't care. I've like, it's not to say I don't play video games. Yeah. Like I have a PS4 and I'm, I bought Bloodborne, I bought Last of Us Remastered. Um, I have a PS Plus subscription, but I don't care about anything that isn't like specifically the kind of game that yeah. I want to play. And I don't care about the drama in the industry. <laughs> I don't care that Kojima got fired. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't matter. No, that's the th- like. I mean, like, are, did you ever play the Metal Gear Solid games? Yeah. Like I love those games, but yeah, I don't. Know, I feel like so many people in the in, who follow video games are so narrow minded. Like Kojima getting fired over Konami, whatever. That just means he can make new games. Like yeah. to me, which is exciting. Like yeah, who who gives a fuck? Like it doesn't mean they said you can't make video games anymore. He's yeah. like the highest rated developer in the world. Like he no, like he's gonna get a budget from somewhere. He'll still yeah. make games, but people think like that's it. Like, yeah. That, that's, I think with me specifically, I don't want to play a million games of the same franchise. I want something new and fresh. Right, right. So Kojima being let go from Konami, oh great, we don't have to play Metal Gear anymore. It's right. like something new and different, and that's appealing to me. I feel like uh, my my experience in games now is limited to the developers that I like mm-hmm. or the designers that I like. Like I'll play probably anything that Naughty Dog brings out. Yeah. Uh, same with um, Grasshopper. What uh, games did they? Grasshopper did. Um, Killer Seven and oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh that's all Suda Fifty One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I guess it's Suda Fifty One. Yeah. Who knows? What do you, the do fuck you follow like platinum games stuff? Like yeah, yeah, platinum, yeah, yeah, yeah. Platinum games. Um, I'll play <laughs> some Capcom games. Now this is something I'm interested. In. Are you what? How do you feel about Dark Souls Three coming out? The fact that they're almost turning this into a yearly franchise. Does that take it away from you? Are you? I didn't like the last Dark Souls. I liked Dark Souls. Demon Souls and I liked uh, Dark Souls 1. Mm-hmm. The Dark Souls 2 was like, <laughs> there was something wrong with it. There is a, yeah, there's a lot of people who hated it. And I, because of that, like I, I bought it the day it came out and then I had, it was you and a few other friends were like, oh, this is, I don't like it, it feels off. And there's a lot of systems they added that made the game like needlessly harder. But I think what it was is I waited like I, I didn't play Dark Souls two till Bloodborne came out, yeah. and so it was like two years. It was a long time. So when I played it, it felt fresh and exciting game, and I yeah. liked Dark Souls two. I think it was that time apart from it. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I still think Demon Souls is the best of the whole. Like, <laughs> I did also like better. Yeah, I, I did like Demon Souls a lot. Did you get through finish Bloodborne? No, really? I, I was just like, Ugh, <laughs> I don't care about any of this. Yeah, you know, why? I play more. Uh, Last of Us Factions than I do <laughs> anything else. Like, Factions, is, there's, it's like they designed a drug for mm-hmm. me because I can't, like, every single day I'll, I'll work on my writing for work and then my lunch break is Factions and then I'll go back to writing and then when I need to take a coffee break, it's Factions. <laughs> uh, like, somebody was like, you have to play... Um, What's that car soccer game that everybody Rocket League. Loves? That was probably me telling you. Rocket League. <laughs> Not just everybody said yeah, me yeah. play Rocket League. I turned it on. I looked down. No, oh, it's factions. <laughs> um, and then my mobile game is Final Fantasy Record Keeper. Yeah. Which is just crack. Like, there's no point to that. There's no story. I, like, I downloaded Record Keeper, and, like, I'm, I don't, I don't ever play games on my iPhone because I, all of those are, like, pay to win. I mean, you can still play for free, and there's something to win. But I don't like how the game is intentionally designed where it's they're trying to hit those psychological things so hard. Hey, thanks for c- coming in today. Here's a million coins. Oh, you you beat this boss. Here's 10 level up. It's like, and it, it's I, I, it's just so, it's so obviously programmed to like no, it's trigger that. I I think it it's, per, it's the perfect balance between, because I haven't paid to win anything. Yeah. Uh, like you can say it takes forever. You can accelerate you can it. save yeah. up all of the... The, it, you can either pay sixty dollars <laughs> to pull a random selection of uh, of armor mm-hmm. uh, and like armor up your dudes, or you can wait and save up fifty mithril 
And on average, you get like five mithril every two days or something. Mm -hmm. So it's just drives you. It's like the tension of like, I could sit, I could just cash in my mithril right now and get like one weapon. (laughs) Or I can wait until I have 50 of them and get 11 weapons. It's great. But it's like the fighting is, the system is pretty deep. Um... The it's got every Final Fantasy character that yeah. has ever existed, so you can make like a little dream team. <laughs> I, it's really good. It's and how just, many like how how many minutes do you play of that a day? Like 20, uh, 30 minutes, or like because that's the one appeal of it is you can play for a little bit every day, and there's nothing you know like it's not a pressure. I, I play for thirty minutes twice a day. Okay, so thirty minutes in the morning, and then you have to wait <laughs> till your stamina comes yeah. back, and then thirty minutes in the evening. Because I I played Triple Triad that was released. Oh my god, Triple Triad's so good. I, I love like I love Triple Triad, but that's annoying because yeah, I, I guess it's twenty minutes because you can only do like five games right. every yeah like yeah you know a, you know like almost twice a day. So I played it, and then there, there's three tiers. There's easy, medium, and hard. So I went through, beat all the thirteen characters, beat, played through all the fourteen games. I beat the hard one. And then, like, that was it, unless I want to collect 10 of... The next step is you have to collect 10 of each card so you can make your own cards and then make 10 of... Them. Then it's just like, okay, this is, can go on for a decade. Yeah. So I kind of stopped playing it. But for, like, a week, I had fun playing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, how... So kind of going back to Last of Us Factions, for anyone who doesn't know, that's, like, Last of Us multiplayer aspect. So... It's so good. When I got The Last of Us, like, just the... So <laughs> with The Last of Us itself... I didn't pre-order it because I kind of didn't follow it. Mm. I didn't really, for like the age of like 17 through I think 22, I was solely focused on movies. I played video games in the background and then it wasn't really until like, yeah, 2013 when The Last of Us came out that I finally started to get back into video games and really following it. So Last of Us came out, it wasn't on my radar. Mm -hmm. And then that weekend it was like, everyone, everyone, okay, so okay, I bought it and then came, played it for like three days straight, beat it and like was floored. Yeah. And I think, and again, like, you you wrote a really beautiful, profound, like, essay on The Last of Us and your experience that with it. That was the only time that I, that's like the last games journalism that I did. Mm-hmm. It was such a moving experience. I was like, I have to write about this game. Um, it really ruined games for me. <laughs> like, I haven't enjoyed anything since mm-hmm. that game came out. Um, and I'm still playing Factions every day, just because the, the crunchiness, yeah. the sound... Like, uh, I was accused of hacking uh, (laughs) because the other players don't play in headphones. If you play in headphones, you can also hear the movement Mm -hmm. of other um, people playing factions unless they have certain perks. Yeah. Um, So you can can turn... Like, if you hear somebody behind you, you you can actually... It's effective to, like... It's just... It's (laughs) so... I can't even... It's so good. And like, yeah, so when Last of Us came out, so I played the game, but yeah, with the multiplayer aspect, I think I played with like three friends. We played a lot, but I, I, how I treat multiplayer games, I'm only there when the community is kind of mm-hmm. there. So my friends had, we played for, yeah, like a month. It was amazing because when normally when a single player game is so good, like the single player narrative core experience, either the multiplayer is tacked on, it's either vice versa. Yeah. With the Call of Duty games initially, I love the multiplayer, didn't care about the single player. Yeah. Last of Us, the single player is so good, I thought the multiplayer, who cares? Like with Uncharted, never played the multiplayer. Right. Played the multiplayer and it was like this whole other game that was so yeah. deep and incredible. Yeah. And yeah, it's brutal. You're setting up booby traps and bombs. The physical melee is just as it's rough. It's funny. And like, it's 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 so violent it's funny so the thing that makes it like surprising to me is with me I can only play multiple games with my friends because I get so mm-hmm. aggravated and angry playing with random people who like mm-hmm. don't know what they're doing or don't communicate but you just play by yourself and you'll still like win and dominate even with like mm-hmm. nine total strangers <laughs> well I I feel like so usually when you play I, I feel like when you play Call of Duty it's designed like you're all a, a team mm-hmm. of dudes who has to like fight another team of dudes yeah. and like there's team work or and like Team Fortress it's team based yes. The Last of Us is about the post-apocalypse <laughs> where like even in the game nobody really knows each other yeah. so I have no problem <laughs> when people are like when people are like alright we're going to the left let's go to the left I'm going to the right yeah like, you don't want to trust them no, this is every yeah. man, literally every man for himself yeah so like, like go ahead and they'll yell at you and you just mute them like I, I feel like as long as you don't ruin the game for the people you're playing with play however you want yeah. in The Last of Us uh-huh. 
Because it's also the last. <laughs> I'm the last of us. And that's what's appealing, too, is that game starts, I think, like, where, depending on the game mode, but you start and each team has 20 lives. So if someone sucks, they run out of lives, yeah. and then it's literally just you're the last person, and they're forced to observe you. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. That <laughs> game is really... I play interrogation all the time because it's funny. Because <laughs> uh, you, you hit a guy, and, he, and once you you down him so he's crawling on the ground and then you have to grab him and shake him a bunch uh and often when i'm playing with a headset on i'll yell because it the te- my teammates are like dude you don't have to you don't have to yell at the guy <laughs> but i'll yell because it's funny mm-hmm. yelling where's your lockbox tell me where your lockbox also, is so you're not like a 12 year old boy hush hush right. in the room <laughs> so right. you can just like yell like fuck you or you yeah. can just like tell me where it is <laughs> Dude, you don't have to do that. You're, I'm muting you if you do that again. <laughs> so outside of Last of Us factions, because yeah, you said the Last of Us kind of ruined games, and I agree. Yeah. Where pre- previously to the Last of Us and a few like key games, for the longest time, video games for me were like sandboxes, where it's like, yeah. okay, there's a story, but it's secondary. Outside of like Final Fantasy and JRPGs, like story is se- and Metal Gear, the story is secondary. I just want to like play with tools, like Grand Theft Auto, drive around, whatever. But then Last of Us was like. I think the most well done narrative story in a game. Yeah. Like you actually ca- cared about everything. Yeah. And, and now, was- now video games are in this weird rut where everything is trying to force this like triple A Hollywood story yeah. and drive at you. And because ultimately it's all kind of being written for like twelve year olds, nothing is connecting. Yeah. It's all trying to be deep. It's all trying to be raw and edgy. And I don't even. I'm not even fully confident that Uncharted Four will like be perfect. I'm sure it'll be, Uncharted Four will be good. I don't expect it to be great because they're still building off another pre-existing yeah, property. Yeah, well, you can, you can make... A, like, Mad Max was an action movie, mm-hmm. which was also a good... It was a good story told visually. Yeah. You know? Like, you can have... If Uncharted 4 is just an adventure game, mm-hmm. but it's a well-done... Like, you, Indiana Jones 3 is still a great movie, yeah. even though it's basically <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. Like, it's still great, and you could have that in Uncharted, and mm-hmm. it will be a great adventure movie. It won't have, like, father-daughter pathos of <laughs> yeah. Last of Us, but it can be a great adventure but movie. But there is with the, like, solely the father figure, you know. Of, yeah. Like, so, like, I am very looking forward to it, but, like, I think with Last of Us... Uh, on, <laughs> what? I was just imagining how Uncharted 4 could open, and, like... With and Nathan carrying so <laughs> <laughs> Stay with me. Stay with me. Either that or like... <laughs> it's going to be the opening scene from Indiana Jones where they're running out being chased by the natives yeah. with spears except his, his helicopter probably gets speared yeah. and everyone gets speared. Nathan gets speared. There is no... I would appreciate it if Naughty Dog, like the opening scene was Nathan turning to Sully and blowing him away <laughs> and then turning to the camera going, I've gone insane. <laughs> and then it cuts and the rest of the game is just... A normal adventure story. <laughs> and you're like, what, what? And it's all building up towards whatever the ending is. Yeah, but, but and then you find out at the end that he like ate something he wasn't. <laughs> just like mushrooms. <laughs> He's really hungry and tired of his adventures. Well, people are going to be mad that you just spoiled the game for it. If, oh if, my god. Yeah, Naughty Dog's going to see this and they'll be like, we have to rewrite. <laughs> That's brilliant. That... Heather just said, "Blow away, Sully!" In the opening, uh, one one game I thought had a really <laughs> unusual and good story. Did you play Gone Home at all? Or no, no. Did you did you, did you did you follow anything regarding not, Gone it's Home? It's not even on my radar. So again, this ties into huge video game nerd bullshit. Mm-hmm. I I played Gone Home. My girlfriend played Gone Home. What is Gone Home? Gone Home is a people are gonna get angry. Well, people people watching this won't get angry, but it's. A game. People say it's not a game. Okay. It's almost like what you would argue with Journey. It's an inter- it's interactive. Journey is not a game. But whatever you want to call it, Gone Home opens. You're a college student returning home to visit your family. Oh wow! And it's like you get a postcard. You you find your postcard that's like, hey mom, I'm coming home on this day. Uh, and then you get you open reading your postcard. It's a sticky note on the door saying like, hey Sarah, you know we went out to like to. Uh, our cabin in the woods, but we'll be back by like Monday. Hope you find your food, whatever. So you start and like, it starts kind of ominous, like, oh God, where's your family? Okay. And it subverts that. And it's like, oh no, your, your family just went on vacation. And then you find a note from your sister saying like, hey, I'm sorry I couldn't miss you. I'm out of town this weekend, whatever. I'll look it and up. It, it, it takes place in the early 90s. So it's mm-hmm. like 1994. You're just going through this house, finding like clues and just charms. Like you, you it, the game feels like a real family lived there. What do you do? You just go around reading postcards. Uh, right, right. Oh, God. But like, I love this game. And like, 
there's an ending twist. If you're, uh, can I even, I want, I kind of want to do no, talk. No, about. I want, I'm just going to, I'm, let me play it. Okay. Let me okay. play it. But there's an ending twist to the game already. Just the argument of whether or not, oh, is this a video game or not interactive? People blew up because it was nominated for like game developers conference. And it's like, this isn't a game, you know, whatever. But because I feel a lot of that stemmed from the fact that it was like developed by females. It's a feminine story. And like, there's a, there's a thing in there and it was so just shat upon and like people hate it, but I thought it was a good game and it was a mature story. But I don't know because I feel this giant like man baby core audience of gamers staked it. You haven't played the game, so I can't talk about it. But I am like maybe one of the sole defenders of Gone Home. I, I like I. <sighs> Ultimately, it doesn't matter. But I don't know why it matters what other people are doing with video games. Like I don't understand why <laughs> that matters at all to anybody. Because who cares if. First off, who cares if, so on both sides, people on like the feminist side mm. are angry at <laughs> people who play Dead or Alive yeah. and like s stop it and zoom in on tits. And mm -hmm. then people who are on the, that side, whatever that side is, you called it man, man baby. <laughs> right. But it doesn't really, yeah. they're angry at mm -hmm. the feminist people who are playing game. What? Diff who yeah. cares? Yeah. Like, play the game that you like and pretend like nobody else is playing that game. And if you're playing online with a bunch of people, mute those people. <laughs> or don't turn on your mic. Like, I guarantee I've been called a dude or a bro 95% more than I'm called a girl when I'm playing factions. Does that, It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like It doesn't affect my ability to interact with the systems of the game. It doesn't affect the des sound design of the game. It doesn't affect anything. Like, just shut up. <laughs> Both sides, shut up. See, that, it's like that's refreshing here because, yeah, you are so removed from, like, video game journalism and stuff, but... Like, I watch Feminist Frequency and I'm like, yeah, she makes good points. And then I watch people who rebut, rebut mm -hmm. Feminist Frequency and I'm like, yeah, they make good points. <laughs> Ultimately, who cares? Who just shut up? <laughs> Both shut up. Just <laughs> shut up. Like, play a game. If you're a girl who wants games designed by girls, then play the games designed by girls and only play those games. Or if you're a girl who doesn't give a shit who designed the game, play those games. If you're a guy who hates that women play games, turn off the internet and you'll never know that women are playing games. I think games. that's the key is turning off the internet. Just turn it off. <laughs> Like, don't... Who cares? What? Oh, God. I mean, I suppose that if I'd been... And somebody can comment on this. They'll be like, well, what if you were that girl who was the little girl trying to play Street Fighter 2? Mm -hmm. um, and and they had been like, no, this is a game for boys. What would you have done? That <laughs> still played. happened. Yeah. Like, then I would have waited till they weren't there. And then I would have played... The, ga the game is the thing that matters. Mm -hmm. And yes, some games are going to be objectify women but some games aren't and if oh god i don't just shut up everybody <laughs> just oh my the other thing is that like when i was growing up games were not cool yeah like they were the things that you got bullied about playing mm -hmm. like i hand drew a map for zelda and i remember telling <laughs> some kid being like what are you drawing and i was like a zelda map and they were like fuck you <laughs> no i i yeah because like i remember when i was in elementary school if someone else knew what zelda was that was your best friend right but now it's like we're going so far out of our way to bully each mm -hmm. other it we're gamers just <laughs> shut up oh god it makes me like that makes me angry yeah the thing that is making the, the angry here and angry here and they're just the fighting whole, I'm like the, over bu here the and I'm bubble like, of it shut the, up. the bubble of it <laughs> god so switching away from that I think a one the one kind of way I can comment on like the nonsense of like sides or whatever is like through satire and comedy. Mm, yeah. And ultimately like for, you moved away from game journalism and got super heavy into comedy and now that's you know what you do. Yeah. Whether it's improv through who's line. And it's bullying in comedy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> that exists too. <laughs> but like a way to like diffuse that it's just like ultimately make jokes and make the idea that none of this matters and mm. that's like through least with comedy. You have so many different realms of like comedy. But I feel like the kind of place to do the most video game comedy would be through like Fox ADHD, yeah. which is like a lot of anime, a lot of video game, and a lot of like cartoons and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, for I'm sure a lot of people like because this is on YouTube, like Fox ADHD is blown up on YouTube. Like it has 
We have more than 200 million views and uh, almost 800,000 subscribers now. Holy crap. Um, and I have managed to work in Last of Us cartoons, Street Fighter cartoons. We have a Mortal Kombat cartoon coming out. Um, what other games? Mario, you've done a lot. A lot. Mario, I've done really specific anime stuff. Yes. Uh, like, that's, I mean, they'd let me, because they don't, my bosses don't know any of that mm -hmm. stuff. So when I'm like, well, there's this anime that I like, and I'd love to parody it. They're like, okay, whatever the fuck a Titan is, go ahead and make a cartoon. <laughs> but then about you make it, it out, and then I, that's what's always funny is like whenever there's, I feel that's a that's a huge thing. I think also dealing with like video game journalism and whatever is a lot of content that's being pushed out there is by adults, but it's either super surface level mm -hmm. where they don't. It's it's kind of being pushed for a mass audience on a very surface level. Or it's very abrasive and juvenile and not not deep enough. And yeah, I feel like if you whenever you do have like an Evangelion parody on Fox ADHD Evangelion, you know, whatever something very just deep and nuanced, all the comments are like, Fox uploaded. They don't understand that like there's an adult on the there's other side. Human beings yeah, watch that, that stuff. And so the same thing with like doing something video game because like you've done a lot of Street Fighter parodies. That are very oh, like. Man, just... I turned out one this week that made people <laughs> angry. Oh, yeah, you know, the realistic Street Fighter 2 where cops come and, you know, assault DJ for their kid. <laughs> but one I thought was really specific was the Guile, Guile's eyebrows. Yeah. Which, like, you, you made this cartoon, I think it's called whatever, Guile's, Guile's song with theme lyrics, and the whole joke is Guile doesn't have eyebrows. And you posted it out, and Seth Killian, the like, uh, who was the former, like, head of, like, Street Fighter. He is a friend of mine so i sent it to him yeah, yeah. Specifically. but he, he put it out saying like oh holy crap i didn't know he, he didn't even realize this yeah and so like that was a very specific thing but i wanted to ask you like how do you generate ideas when it comes to you know like doing video game parodies when you are given an assignment or you have to turn in pitches do you just think initially like oh what's a game i want to parody or do you play games mining it in the background no, what is your kind of process it's just what i like yeah. it's like what I, if i'm really into something that week then i'll probably write about mm -hmm. it uh like um i was really into sword art online and so i wanted to write something where i incorporated sword art online mm -hmm. but i didn't want to, and i actually i wrote a parody that will never come out so i'll just spoil it which was um gamers it's Sword Art Online 3, and the game world that they get trapped in is Dark Souls 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that got rejected. It, well, it or, was, I mean, it's two things yeah. that are two, like it's, okay, here's something you've never heard mm -hmm. of, Fox, and here's another thing you've never yeah. heard of, Fox, and I'm going to combine these things. But it was like everybody in oh, that's so perfect. Sword Art being like, <laughs> Can't when we die in the game, we die in real life, and we're in Dark Souls. Yeah, so so somebody you... like touches a wall and a boulder falls on them. Oh, that's such a great idea. Yeah, that, that's so it's just kind of whatever I'm playing that mm -hmm. week. Or and the problem for me is that I have only played factions for a year. Yeah. So like I only want to write about factions, and it's not relevant <laughs> for anybody anymore. Um, but the same with the the songs that don't have lyrics thing. Mm -hmm. uh, which also I've been told is a pre, it, like there's somebody else. Yeah, there's, there's a guy named Brown Floss, but there's also a trillion. It, that's the, the one thing with like YouTube is there is a hundred trillion people uploading yeah. videos. Yeah, I so I was watching um, early SNL episodes mm -hmm. and there's the thing where Bill Murray is singing lyrics to Star Wars. Oh. <laughs> uh, and I was like, oh, oh man, you should do this for video games. Yeah. And so I started writing video game lyrics or uh, lyrics for songs that didn't have lyrics. Mm -hmm. Uh, because Bill Murray did it in Saturday Night Live, yeah. and I was just kind of like, oh, we should update this. And of course, like, there's a million people online who already do it. But I have, so, and I don't know. I also don't leave this room much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, so, yeah, I was playing Street Fighter and was like, I should write lyrics to one of these things. What is something... The only thing Fox mandated was that the reason... Uh, the reason that the Super Mario Brothers without lyrics worked was that I observed something observed something about the game that that made the song worth singing. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, when you can observe something about any of these properties that you don't think anybody else has observed, yeah. then write the song about that. And I was playing Street Fighter and I'm like, Kyle doesn't have eyebrows. <laughs> that's a really weird design mm -hmm. choice. And so that's so I I never sit down and play a video game and I'm like, what can I make fun of? It's mostly like while I'm playing a video game, something happens and I laugh at yeah. it and then I make a song or a short about that's, it. That's like one key example is I did a video 
when Resident Evil, the, re the remake came out on PS4, I was playing it in like the item boxes in that game. You put an item in one box, it's in the other room. Yeah. And so I came up with the idea of like the si the umbrella scientist who created the item box system where it's you put a first aid spray here and it's all the way in the basement. Yeah. And it was that, it was just, I think like the key to comedy is presenting something that no one else has seen in yeah. an entertaining way. Uh, yeah. But like, again, the thing I marvel at you, and I think a lot of people are who like know you and your process is like, I like turn out a video of me once every two months, whereas you submit like 10 pitches a week. Yeah. So I have, it's, um, I, I'm now up to almost two shorts a week on Fox ADHD. Um, and it's a, it's a lot of work. I've written 800 shorts since I, uh, was hired there and there's a lot of them that are good and past like the sword art one that's so that's the thing too Heather will always like like sometimes I'll hang out with her and she'll like tell me like her like <laughs> her, her like 10 lists of pitches she's turning in that Friday and it's like yeah like you know 90% of them won't get developed but they're the, so funny the only time I do stand up uh, cause I really I'm not a stand up person mm -hmm. I'm sketch or improv all I do when I get on stage is read my pitches that have been <laughs> yeah. turned down and that's my whole routine uh, and it'll either be pitches that I tried to get Eric Andre to do or pitches that I tried to get Fox to do or whatever. Uh, cause I, I have like a book, like I could publish a book that was just like the titles you should, yeah, of geez. all this Cause stuff. even like, uh, Mr. Show, Bob and Dave, they just put out like their Hollywood said no, which is a giant book of reje rejected sketches yeah. and stuff. And like, oh, that was great. great. So yeah, like with Eric Andre, I know, I didn't you say there was an opening bit that's like a. 0.5 seconds where Eric Andre does Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Was that what you're... Yeah. 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 So that's great. I'm curious, like, at S... Because with SNL, there's rarely ever video game parodies. And if right. it is, it's very surface. Did you when, you... when you were there at SNL, did you ever write any video game pitches? I pitched... I pitched something... Uh, oh, boy. This is off. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I love... Okay. So I pitched a Pokemon short. Yeah. Uh, or a sketch. And the response was, well, is Pokemon popular enough? <laughs> and I was like, uh, uh, it's, it was the 20 year anniversary. And I it think. was also, I think, right when Pokemon 3D was coming out. Yeah. Like, like, it was like just, yeah. So out, so on the bottom floor of Rockefeller Center is, um, the Nintendo store. And whenever I'd get depressed at my job, I would go to the Nintendo store and like sit and like <laughs> kind of just zone out yeah. and come back up. Um, but the week that I turned in this Pokemon sketch, there was a, a concert that, where the Christmas tree usually is. And the Presidents of the United States of America was the band playing. And they were <laughs> singing Pokemon songs to a crowd of like five or 6,000 people. And there was a Pikachu balloon floating. And like the, somebody was like, well, does anyone know Pokemon? <laughs> and I went over to the window and opened oh up the window. God. And there's like, I'm like, D yeah, it's like, it's. It's so, it's, it's like, does anyone know Mickey Mouse? Like, yeah. it would be different if I was pitching The Last of Us, but I was pitching yeah. Pokemon, which is... It's, which, like, also, like, if people played Pokemon at first count in 95 and say they were 10, they'd be 30. You know, yeah, like, so adults. it's like... Yeah, Like, it's an adult... Anyway, so that was... I didn't have any... I don't think I had any video game stuff end up on SNL mm -hmm. uh, because it was impossible. Like, at Fox, they... they if I come to them with something and I'm like, this is a thing and it's important to people, so we should parody it, they trust me. Yeah. They're like, they're and they like, see the comments too, which again, mostly like teenagers where it's like, all the comments are like, holy shit. It's, I mean, it's internet comments to so like 70% it's negative, but most of it actually is like, holy shit, an actual right. parody of this. You right. Know. And like some of our, like there's a Sonic the Hedgehog parody that's like 8, 8 million views yeah. and like our top video is like a Power Rangers parody that has like 10 million views. Mm -hmm. And specifically with Power Rangers, I brought in the script and my boss was like, I literally don't understand why this is funny. I have no idea. Cause a lot of it is like shouting the move that you're mm -hmm. doing, uh, or you know, like tropes of anime and tropes of Sentai shows. Yeah. And she was like, I don't know what the fuck this is, but if you tell me that it's going to get a million views then we'll do it. And I'm like, I promise it'll get a million views. And now it's the top video on the channel. And that's, I think, the difference between... There's also a lot more at stake mm -hmm. at SNL. Oh, like, totally. You can't just... You can't trust a new writer to be like, hey, I want to write a video game thing. Mm -hmm. Because they'd, they'd be like, you know that this is a show with 40 years of history. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to waste a sketch on your bullet. Like, what if I'd been a lunatic? Mm -hmm. um, so I felt like there was a lot of stuff that is a part of my life and a part of everyone's lives now when the video game industry makes more money than movies, yeah. uh, that 
they didn't they, they just didn't have access to i think also like say within 10 years from now is like people playing video games are getting older and then they'll start getting in positions of power yeah because even like neil Druckmann, who made the last of us is like late 30s yeah. these are all young developers yeah so like, i think it's even with snl like it's because yeah the people in charge are like up, you know all over like six years you know it's they're older yeah. so i think you know as time goes on the people charge like eric andre because he's like head of his show what same thing like third early 30s late yeah. 20 you know, it's like oh let's do a mortal Kombat thing even yeah. for a second like yeah so i'll be more because recently on uh i think it's called rick and morty which mm -hmm. i think is dan Harmon's show or someone's there was like a nintendo joke in there and the internet was like what the what a nintendo joke on cartoon network yeah, where they were like bringing in yeah, yeah. stuff but and it was like, like a, give us free games yeah give us free and games. it was like a deep it was like a deep nuanced joke yeah. a real thing but like the internet freaked out because it was their video game thing on TV. Yeah. And ultimately, like, oh, yeah, like, it's not surprising. And, like, as time goes on, there'll be more and more. Because even, uh, you know, our, like, our friend, or Zach Piaz with uh, some Disney show, Gravity Falls, he did an episode with, like, Street Fighter and, like, uh, Dating Sims. And, again, again, these show, these, you know, they're in their 30s. So it's, like, video game comedy starting to get a little more mainstream. Yeah. Um, I also feel like at this point... You wouldn't you wouldn't fight back against the idea of of a of an album, right? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be like, well, I don't know if people listen to albums. <laughs> and at this point, everybody plays everybody yeah. plays video games, either on your phone or like whether it's casual or mm -hmm. hardcore, PC, whatever. Like, you can't argue. Well, does anyone play an album mm -hmm. anymore? Then you can argue. Does anyone play video games? Is this going to be important? Like, you wouldn't want to base. An entire sketch necessarily around a specific album but the language of video games and the yeah. vocabulary of video games is just it's universal now so yeah I, I, it's event like there was also like episodes of community that took place inside oh yeah totally. so yeah it's coming around <laughs> yeah it's, it's getting there um one last touching point is where do you see what are you excited for in the future in terms of stuff that's coming up morpheus <laughs> so yes yeah, so you're excited because i know you're a huge like tech junkie you're 100 percent in on vr i will lay down on the floor i will have morpheus <laughs> on I, I will put a feeding tube in my mouth <laughs> and a shitting tube in my butt and then i will just i would go away what like i'm excited for the morpheus what this is so not the intent of it but like if they can hook up netflix to morpheus i just want to lie in bed <laughs> and like have an imax experience in my head i'll watch old movies that um, that's the most appealing just have imax but yeah. it's funny when they when they showed off like morpheus stuff at this e3 i think it was namco had a vr tech demo that was like a girlfriend in a beach house and it was yeah. did you see that and it, the, the text was like experience something you've never had before <laughs> and it was a pretty girl sitting next to you yeah. but like i and then like there was like a hat suit a hatsune miku thing where she could like look up her skirt like all these deep things and then there'll be other video games there's also like one where you were it was just being underwater right mm -hmm. that like it was just yeah. like you're underwater yeah and you're going where i don't i like um so here's what i want here's what i want i want in the future that you there's like a camera that uh, a friend of mine has that you click and it takes a full 3d photo of a room instantaneously like it's oh, all awesome. directions photo uh i want morpheus for google street view so that i can just go to oh, a that's place so cool. yeah and like around. and just walk around in that place like i would love to be able like imagine if you're wearing morpheus in this room and somebody is live streaming like just put a post in the lights line in Amsterdam and it's three dimensional 3d camera and it's a post and you log on and you can have coffee beside you and you can sit in the lights line and have your morning coffee live with what I mean that's what I want like you might not be able to teleport anywhere mm -hmm. but like what if I could just like ride the train like if I'm in between writing pieces on uh, for Fox or whatever the hell I'm working on mm -hmm. And I could just sit on a train in Japan and like take the green line yeah. all the way, the Yamanote all the way around. Like how great would that be? Like that's what I want Morpheus for. I don't know that I need to play. Like <laughs> do I need to play a video game inside I, I mean like it's it's so early on that it's going to be exciting to see like what all the possibilities are. Because like you are saying with that, there's also like movie companies are starting to experiment with like games doing fully 3D movies and all yeah, that. Yeah. Well, so, It'll be exciting to see. I have an interview coming up with Oculus. Oh, damn. Uh, for creating stories that are inside of mm -hmm. Oculus. And I kind of want to be like, no, guys, just take 3D cameras everywhere on the on the planet. But could you imagine how terrifying The Last of Us 
I don't, yeah, so there is obviously there's a place for it. But yeah. For me personally, mm-hmm. what I want is go anywhere on earth and sit there and relax for a few minutes. That would be all so with the benefit amazing. of not leaving your room. In the- well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> for me, that that sounds perfect and beautiful. I'm excited. It's funny to think that like the lines of line would smell like my office, <laughs> or like that like. I could go to like, uh, I don't know, I've never been to Russia mm-hmm. and it would be kind of cool to go to like Moscow or St. Petersburg or something and like sit, but it would smell, it would smell like these books. Yeah. Uh, I've been to Russia and it's just a trillion cigarette butts on the ground. Oh, <laughs> so okay, it smells great. like cigarettes. Great. But maybe the VR, the Morpheus will be packed with like smells, sprays. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> well, anything can happen, but uh, I'm looking forward to Morpheus, Tekken 7. <laughs> I'm very excited for Tekken 7. I'm looking there to- is a cat girl in Tekken 7. Uncharted 4. Uh, Last of Us 2 someday. Um, Last Guardian. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're not excited? No. I'm, okay. no. I'm no longer excited for that. <laughs> now that they announced it, now that it's real. You know. It's not real. <laughs> it's not real. It's. I don't care. You. They've shown us the exact same amount of footage since 2006. It's just, yeah, they'll, they'll wait 10 years. It is a joke. <laughs> it is a private joke at Sony, and they just think it's funny. That's what I would do. Like, if I could show people, like, sh- like sketches from shorts that were upcoming and be like, we're really working hard on this <laughs> short, of course I would leak a short that doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I'm looking forward to Final Fantasy XV. Mm-hmm. Although, so far, the world seems so barren. Like, it just seems like grass and trees... And the whole reason to play Final Fantasy games is that they aren't Earth. Yeah. And it just feels like like you run up a hill and nothing... Like, even the... Like, why aren't the rocks purple? <laughs> no, I mean... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I mean, Final Fantasy XIV's world design is great. Because it is that. It is very alien. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, fourteen is is crazy plants mm-hmm. and, like, plants that have crystals instead and of, the expansion, like, there's, like, Cloud City. Like, it's, it's yeah. awesome. So why would you ever... Play, I mean, like, why would I ever want to run around on regular grass? <laughs> why isn't the grass, like, gems or, like, maybe it's, I don't know. I think it could just be a shortcut of development, you know? Like, Ugh. it's easier to develop, design grass for 10 miles as opposed to... Like, there's a part in the recent trailer where they get out of the car and they go over and they're, like, looking over the sea and there's, like, alligator dragons, like, kind of walking <laughs> around. I'm like, that shit should be everywhere. <laughs> Like, that should be, like, there should be birds flying that are, like, terrifying and weird. And it just looks like, I don't know, it looks boring. Well, we'll see what happens. See. I'm excited. We'll take a few more, e- we'll take a few emails. <laughs> so first email's from Leo. I want to know your guys' thoughts on how horror games present themselves, how much they've evolved since things like Resident Evil, Silent Hill. What are things you look for in a horror game, uh... And then what do you think about stuff like Five Nights at Freddy's and jump scares? Uh, go ahead. You yeah, want? I think with me, my favorite era of like horror games is the PS2 era. Yep. Where it was all these mid-sized, like not low budget, but just like mid-sized budget games that relied more on atmosphere mm-hmm. than like maybe necessarily graphics. Like you had games like Silent Hill, like Silent Hill 2. Is the best. I think it, like the story is great, but the atmosphere, it's just the unsettling best. designs, that's great. Uh, there's two games, Haunting Ground and Rule of Rose. Mm-hmm. Haunting Ground is terrifying because it's not necessarily jump scares or anything like that. It's you are being chased the entire game. You can't defend yourself. <laughs> it's hide and seek where you're running away from ogres and witches and like devil dogs. And that's a game I played. With Haunting Ground, I was standing up in my chair screaming and like running in place because it's terrifying. You're just exploring a big castle. Haunting Ground's great. Those mid-side games don't really exist anymore. There's small indie games or like huge triple A games, but like yeah, the, nothing the on that level. The scariest thing that happened in Silent Hill 2, I was playing I was playing it through with a friend who didn't play video games, but he was like, he was like, this is so <laughs> scary and cool. Um, there was a point where you're in an apartment complex oh God, yeah. and you like black out and you go into the apartment complex again and like the textures are all different. Mm-hmm. So you're like, oh, I'm in a different place now. <laughs> And then, like, as we're walking down a hall, my friend Josh was like, this is, Heather, this is the same apartment building. <laughs> and I'm like, what? No, it's no, it's not. He's, uh, he's like, no, that's, that, that, that's the same doors. It's the same layout. It's the same numbers. It's the same apartment building, but it looks different. And I was like, ah, I put down, like, a, like there's yeah. nothing that happens. No, it's just all atmosphere. And, and like, just, yeah. it's, it's, it's funny because it's like a cheap way for them to, like, 
reuse the layout, but like it's not just it's you know completely painting the whole world over. Yeah. And specifically in that apartment, the nightmare one, you walk in and there's like the orgy with Pyramid Head and the two like yeah. leg mannequins. It's like yeah. it's so dark. There and was also up. a staircase in Silent Hill Two that was just really long, mm -hmm. and that was the whole yeah. thing with the staircase. Is just it was a really long staircase. I mean, walk and we're like walking and walking and walking. And then I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I don't want to go down. Okay. And I don't just wanna... building up in the music. Like, yeah. Like, but yeah. So like that, that kind of atmosphere isn't built anymore. No. And then were they like, I mean, I don't, I, that's, I hadn't even heard of Five Nights at Freddy's till like, I don't know, two months ago. And now they're on their fifth one. Yeah. <laughs> like whatever. But like, again, those are cheap, whatever. But like things like that and Outlast rely on jump scares. I feel like I haven't played these I, games, but I played Five Nights at Freddy's, uh, mostly because, um, the other, Eric Moneypenny wrote a parody of it mm. for um, Fox that didn't uh, that didn't end up going mm. forward, but he's like, yeah, all these kids are playing this game, so I downloaded it and played it, and I'm like, I don't get it, and I'm like, <laughs> I played it, and I'm like, I don't get it either. Like, what, what it? Uh, there's no, there's no depth. It's mm. just like looking. It reminds me of like Sega CD era. <laughs> Like when Night games, trap. yeah, like Night Trap, where it's just like you're looking and looking yeah. and looking, and that's the thing. Like looking is the thing, as opposed to like interacting is the thing. So I, I don't know. And I think again, this is so, so, like this is already tired, but like again, kids are used to now looking, watching the video games and playing it themselves. Again, they, yeah. they're not, they aren't used to letting atmosphere and dread build on them. They just yeah. want like the quick releases, the quick shocks, and all that. Yeah. But uh. Yeah, and it's sad because yeah, Konami who did Silent Hill, they're done with video game development. Capcom <sighs> is just like Resident Evil is now action, uh, and then it's Street Fighter, and then not much else outside. So like, no company. Well, they they were released like Mega Man collections. <laughs> yeah, so maybe there'll be collections, but yeah, I think the best horror games were PS2 era. Yeah, Silent Hill two, and then Honey Ground and Rule of Rose. Rule of Rose is all atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's like there's a it's a sepia tone. It's, you're dealing with orphan girls, it's British, there's like violin music, like it's, yep. again, all atmosphere and that's what's lacking. Yeah. Um, and then one more question, Victor asks, what are your thoughts about Square Enix announcing all of their anticipated titles at once, including Final Fantasy VII Remake, Kingdom Hearts 3, and Final Fantasy XV? Do you think the remake is just a, just, just to fulfill a long time pipe dream, a cash grab, a, or a cash grab? Uh, I knew that they were remaking Final Fantasy VII in 2009. <laughs> uh, like, they were already working yeah. on it. And uh, a friend of mine, it was another journalist, was like, yeah, they don't know if they're going to announce it until after... Uh, at that point, it was 13 Verses. Yeah. Uh, because they didn't want to draw attention away from mm -hmm. 13 Verses. But it was like, all the way back then, was they were already working on it. Uh, I think that... The thing that made Final Fantasy VII fun was it was weird. Mm -hmm. It was weird. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, within the first hour of the game, there's Cloud running around the bathhouse with all the guys you're dressing up. Yeah, it's a weird game. Mm -hmm. uh, and old Final Fantasy games are weird. Mm -hmm. Like, unless that shit is in... Like, how... It's weird. Yeah, because, like, the art style... And again, I'm, 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 I'm excited to see it. I don't need it, but, like, yeah, the art, the remake, the art style is very serious and like, gritty. Well, how, how is the dude in, like head to toe black leather going to hang out with Kate Sith <laughs> which is a, like a marshmallow with a cat on its head I don't yeah I don't and then like that's it it was it was weird it's less weird because it was um what do you call it it wasn't it, it was all poly big yeah, fat polygons human yeah, yeah. Looking. so like mo most of what you looked at when you looked at Cloud on the screen was there's like a triangle for a head and then like two little eyes and then like his arms were like Popeye. A pentagon body. Yeah. yeah. So like him standing next to a marshmallow doesn't... Because it, they're both a, mm -hmm. the same level yeah. of detail. There is a cat wearing a crown on top of a stuffed animal. Right? That's what Kate Sith yeah. is. If they're going to remake the game, then that's in it. And what is like Cloud going to be like, I don't know, I have to find Sephiroth. <laughs> and Kate Sith is next to him going, Hey, let's eat spaghetti! <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I, I think ultimately because the uh, people have been wanting it for so long, I feel I think there's gonna be an, an outcry whenever it comes out that people won't be happy. It's I think there's it's there's no way to make that game in a way yeah. that makes people happy. Um and then yeah with Final Fantasy 15, I, that's I mean I'll play it when it's out. Uh, yeah. I'm one thing I'm excited is Square at their last E3. Whatever they announced the big games, but they also announced things like Near Two, which came out of nowhere. They announced a whole new like a new art JRPG property. 
a new Star Ocean game. Yeah. So it's like, I think Square... Star Ocean is trash. <laughs> I'm excited to that check is, it out. That's one of those games that I played like uh, 30 hours of, and I was like, really? I, oh I've my never played God. it. Oh my God. In, who made Infinite Undiscovery? I, <laughs> that game was awful. I almost bought that. It was on clearance at Target yesterday for <laughs> five bucks. The title of it is for, I don't know, I, awful, Infinite Undiscovery. Awful, awful game. Did you, uh, this is another tangent, we'll wrap this up, but did you play, um, there was two JRPGs that came out in 360. There was Blue Dragon yeah. and then Lost Odyssey. Were either of those good? Lost Odyssey is really, really good. Uh, it's very, very slow, mm -hmm. but it is really, really good. And there's great writing in it. And there's a Japanese language track on the game. So it was like, it's oh a my God. really right. good awesome. game. Uh, and you can tell that it's not, cause it wasn't that Sakaguchi. Who yeah. Wrote, uh, so like you can tell that it's an attempt to make a Final Fantasy style game with budget and time constraints that they didn't have at Square Enix. Okay. Cause like even the way that like lightning walks is better than all of the stuff animated in uh in lost odyssey mm -hmm. um but the the writing was really really good and the music was really good uh the designs were ugly but they were at least interesting like it was a good game i didn't play blue dragon because i don't like that artist oh man see I, I i'm just now getting to dragon ball 30 years late but like i'm so like that's why i played dragon quest finally i played dragon quest 8 very long and like kind of slow paced, but What's like his name Toriyama. Yeah, uh, that art style. It's just it's charming, and again, kind of what drew me back to Street Fighter Two and like Capcom's arcade games. Just the charming art style before every, before like Dark Knight happened, and like everything is now gritty and yeah, yeah, I don't know. And there's just something I like about big bright, and again with like Sega Dreamcast era, big bright blue yeah. graphics, which a lot of it's missing. I like. I mean, there there are blue skies in Final Fantasy Fifteen. Like it's all oh, blue, yeah, yeah. beautiful skies. I just don't. I don't. I liked Dragon Quest, but I don't like that artist. I like Chrono Trigger. Mm -hmm. um, but he just did like the the like packaging, or, like the, yeah. the actual in-game art is still like pixel. Yeah, I don't, eh. <laughs> I just don't, I think I, I can see that it's good quality. Like yeah. I'm not saying it's garbage art. It's just not, it doesn't communicate to me. <laughs> yeah. All right, well I will play uh, Lost Odyssey to skip Odyssey. Infinite Discovery. Well, thank you for watching. <laughs> this is a good episode. What did we learn today? We learned that Heather has Waterworld on Virtual Boy. Mm -hmm. uh, have you? Do you have Glover on N64? No. Okay. No. No, no Glover. Uh, we learned shut up about video game arguments. Just, <laughs> just shut, shut up. up. Shut up. Uh, and then, uh, what other? Any other last words of advice to our audience? Um, play Last of Us Factions. Uh, if uh, you work at Naughty Dog and uh, you want me to talk about the game on television at any point, send me a t-shirt don't tell me i please i'll do uh can i if you want background you don't i won't even get credited here's here's my i beg you Druckmann, i beg you <laughs> can you have me get hit by a stick or shot i'll do some background <laughs> sounds of like Ugh, ow no like i'll do that any of that you need i'll slave for eight hours uncredited and unpaid to be in, okay, it's just between you and me, that's all.